Well, it's good. It, uh, they have a place up north of uh, Champaign, about 15 miles away, called uh, Rantoul, a community up there, and they call it Camp Rantoul. It's set up very much uh, just for football all day long, uh, a couple days a week. They have two a days, one in the morning, one in the evening, and they do that for a couple of weeks, have a couple of scrimmages while they're up there, and now they're back in town. The school started this week at the University of Illinois, so guys are in class, and uh, Ron Zook went to morning practices last spring, and he's doing it again now, so... They've already had practice uh, this morning between 8.15 and 10.30, and, and they're all done. Illinois went 7-6 and six last season. We got to see them when Ohio State went there pretty early on, and it didn't look like a bad team. Certainly they gave Ohio State a little bit of trouble. So what happened last year? Well, it was an up-and-down year, as the record would indicate. Um, you know, we, we lost the opening game uh, with Missouri uh, in St. Louis, a hard-fought game there, and then, uh, you know, got off to a pretty good start as the, as, as the season went on the you know, won a couple of games early in the Big Ten and uh, blew out Indiana and blew out Purdue. And, and then uh, we're rolling along and then went to Michigan and lost that. You may remember the triple overtime game, uh, 67-65 to Michigan. And that kind of uh, threw them back a couple of weeks. Uh, lost at home to Minnesota, which was just a devastating loss. I think it was Minnesota's first win under their new coach when he took over for Tim Brewster. And when they battled the Buckeyes, uh, they played, you know, gave themselves a chance, but didn't quite finish the job. And, uh, you know, they got stronger as the year went on. They uh, Once they recovered from the Michigan and Minnesota losses, they, they beat Northwestern very soundly, uh, rushed for over 500 yards and a win at Wrigley Field, and uh, wound up going to the uh, bowl game in, in Houston and beat Baylor pretty soundly. So, uh, you know, I think people are excited about the way they finished, especially in the bowl game against Baylor. Uh, they did lose some key guys. Corey Legit, drafted by the Chargers, and Martez Wilson, a linebacker, was drafted, as was Mikel Lashore by the Detroit Lions. And uh, So they lost those three guys, but they got several guys back. Nathan Shieldhouse is a second-year starter uh, as a sophomore and uh, threw for 1,800 yards and rushed for over 800 last year, and they're expecting even bigger numbers from him this year. And uh, Jason Ford, who was a backup to Mikel Lashore, is back. They've added a couple of outstanding freshman tailbacks. Uh, one from the Katy, Texas, who kind of got away from the Texas schools. He had a foot injury late in his career in high school, and he is, uh, I think he's going to be a really terrific running back. And Josh Ferguson from the state of Illinois. But they've got some good guys back on both offense and defense, but I think a lot of people are uh, rating them down, I guess, in the Big Ten, not looking for much, based, I think, more on who they lost than, than who they have coming back. Ohio State goes to Champaign, Illinois, to take on the Fighting Illini October 15th. The voice of the Illini, Brian Barnhart, joins us here via the Subway Fresh Take Hotline 97.1. The fan, uh, Ron Zook, headed into this year. How secure is his job? How secure is his situation? Well, I think for now it's okay. I mean, I think, uh, you know, he, he had uh, a couple of down years and then, of course, had the, had the bowl uh, game last year after the Rose Bowl game, uh, Rose Bowl year back in 2007 and, and January of 08. So, uh, they brought in the two new coordinators, uh, paid them a lot of money, uh, more than they'd ever paid coordinators at Illinois, uh, you know, uh, both for uh, Paul Petrino, who came up from Arkansas, and, and then Vic Koning, the defensive coordinator, came in from Kansas State. And both of those guys uh, really did a great job last year and under the leadership of Ron Zook. And so I think everybody's feeling pretty good right now. We do have a new athletic director who came in from Cincinnati. You may know him, Mike Thomas, uh, who just took over for Ron Gunther, who was here for almost 20 years. Uh, as the AD. And I think the general feeling is if they have a good season, uh, things will, will be fine. If we can go to back-to-back bowl games for the first time in about 20 years, uh, that would be a good accomplishment. Uh, if they stumble and, uh, you know, stub their toe, and then, you know, Mike Thomas uh, would be probably facing a decision at some point if they didn't have the kind of year that they hope to have. But uh, right now he's in good shape. He's got good coordinators, and I think everybody's you know, getting more and more optimistic as we get closer to the start of the season. Tell us a little bit more about Nate Schillhouse. We saw him as a very young quarterback last year. He looked composed. He wasn't great, obviously, but he looked pretty composed for a young guy. Well, what will he be like going into this season? Well, he's already better now than he was a year ago, much better, and he got better as the year went on last year. He's one of those kids. He threw a few interceptions early, uh, and then he only, I think he went about four or five weeks in a row without throwing one interception had a couple late in the year, but again, had a, a really outstanding finish to his uh, first year as a starter, as a redshirt freshman. He completed, I think, his first 13 passes in a row in the bowl game against Baylor. Uh, they want him to rush for 1,000 yards if they can this year, uh, you know, throw for 2,000. Uh, he got close to 2,000 yards passing last year. He's one of those kids that 
Uh, he's so sharp. He's a great. He's a natural born leader. He stepped in the huddle last year as a redshirt freshman and and just really kind of took over, uh, even in that Missouri game as far as the leadership role. Uh, and the big thing with him is if he makes a mistake, uh, once he studies the film and and learns what he did wrong, he doesn't make the same mistake again. So he just constantly is getting better, constantly moving up the ladder as far as his success rate. And I uh, presume that's going to continue into this year. So we're pretty excited about what he's going to be able to do. For sure. We're talking to Brian Barnhunt again, voice of the Fighting Illini, as we preview every Buckeye football opponent for 2011. Ohio State takes the trek out west to Champaign on October 15th. You mentioned briefly defensively, but what does this defense look like? Who are they returning? Who's going to stand out? Oh, a couple of guys. I think uh, up front, uh, Michael Buchanan is a bandit who plays on the front line or can move around. They they really like his athleticism. Whitney Merciless is back, a guy that's played a lot. I think of all the areas, you know, if you're looking at front, a defensive front linebackers and and uh, in the secondary, the the weakest point they've got to shore up and they've got to get some more depth is on the defensive line. They lost Corey Legit, who was a great run stopper in the middle. Akeem Spence is back in the middle. He was kind of Robin to uh, Legit's Batman, if you will, in the middle of that defense. So they need him to step up to the next level. They've got some pretty solid three, uh, three and four deep on that line, but Vic Coning likes to go six or eight deep. Uh, and right now they're looking for that six, seven, and eight guys to make that line solid. Linebackers are going to be good. Ian Thomas has been near the top of the league in tackles uh, for a couple of years before Martez Wilson uh, kind of passed him on that chart last year before he was drafted. So Ian's back. A guy named kid named Jonathan Brown, I think, is coming on. is going to be a really good player in this league. And in the secondary, it's probably the most experienced. Uh, Terry Hawthorne is coming back from a foot injury, but he's one of the fastest guys, uh, I think, in the Big Ten. Justin Green was an outstanding track uh, athlete in, in Louisville, Kentucky. He's back for his second year at corner. Tavon Wilson, I think, got some honorable mention uh, mentions as far as Big Ten defensively in the secondary last year. So those those three guys kind of anchor things in the secondary and uh, I think that that's probably the strongest position linebacker second and then they'll have to shore up the defensive line but I think McConing he doesn't have the big run stopper yet uh, if he can develop someone into that that'll certainly help the defense if not he may have to do a few things a little more stunting a little more blitzing a little more uh, you know, change up defenses to maybe offset if they don't get the middle of the line uh, strengthened. Not always the sexiest spot on the field, but you guys boast one of the best kickers in the country. Derek Dimke now a senior. What uh, what can you tell us about that young man? Well, he made 24 field goals last year. He, he just uh, had fell one shy, I think, of setting the all-time record as far as that goes. And he was remarkably consistent. He took over uh, a couple of years ago in the middle of the season uh, from Matt Eller, who was the regular kicker there for a couple of years. Matt's, in fact, no longer with the team. So, uh, Dimke basically has, has taken over that job and uh, uh, just tremendously accurate from any distance, 50 yards from 30 yards. Uh, he's only missed a very small handful uh, inside of 40 yards in his career. So that's a real weapon for us. He also does the kickoffs uh, with on a regular basis, so he's been very steady. We do have a freshman putter this year. Uh, Justin DeVernois is a kid that they brought in from Florida who was on some highly touted, uh, a highly touted high school team in the state of Florida. It was looked at by several schools, and he basically is going to uh, come in and probably start at putter uh, and take over that role from Matt Sant- uh, Anthony Santella, who was an outstanding putter for us uh, the last couple of years. But uh, So one one senior and one freshman at, at those two key spots there. Very interesting. Again, Brian Barnhart, voice of the Fighting Illini, previewing that Illinois game against Ohio State October 15th. And let's wrap up with this. Start off with home games against Arkansas State, South Dakota State. It looks like... You know, you can kind of your team can kind of get some legs under themselves before they get into Big Ten play. Well, it's funny because we always uh, marveled. I know Ohio State often had several home games in a row, or they would <laughs> sure. not leave the state for the first uh, five or six weeks. I'm sure you're familiar with that, and that's kind of the way it is. We we have never had eight home games. Seven has been rare. Six has been more the norm. Uh, so everybody's pretty excited about the eight at home out of the twelve, uh, and the first five, as you mentioned, all at home games and we don't start with Missouri this year which is the first time in several years that hasn't happened down in St. Louis so chance to get off to a good start Arizona State's probably the toughest opponent of the early three or four uh, that Illinois would be favored in Uh, that's Arizona State picked I think to win the the Pac-12 South as they call it now so that would be a tough game at night a a big early test Uh, Northwestern's the first uh, home game in the Big Ten and then uh, the first two road games by the way we don't even get on a plane until the end of October when we go to Penn State, because the first two road trips are at Indiana at Purdue. Uh, so the schedule breaks their way. If they can take care of business early, 
they could set themselves up with a nice little finish and a nice bowl game at the end of the year. A lot of football to play before Ohio State goes to Illinois, but Brian, we look forward to catching up with you in mid-October when the temps drop off a little bit, and uh, we, and we really get into the season. We appreciate your time for now, though. Thanks so much. Well, we appreciate it. It's coming fast, and uh, we're looking forward to getting it started finally.